This is Jack from Hockey Alley, and today I'm doing a segment on how we're going to bend the rules with the zebras, the referees. Uh, how are you, Jason? I'm doing well, Jack. How about yourself? Good, thanks. I just spoke to you the other day regarding uh, what choices you had of players and what would your choices be and all that. Uh, I got uh, one more, two more things. Uh, so if there was a main face-off into the game or an important face-off, who would you put out there? Oh, Jacko, that's a tough question. There's a lot of great face-off men that have been and existed in the world, but yeah. uh, I'm going to go completely outside the box of what probably anybody would think. And I would say... Oh, he played for the Edmonton Oilers. Yes, I live in Alberta. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was Steve Stales. No, was that him? Yeah, Steve Stales. Steve Stales. Wow, that's unusual. Yeah, he one. was. Uh, he he played for the Oil Kings uh, back in his day. I think I think I got and the right Canucks. guy. Vancouver Canucks. He played for the Canucks, but uh -huh. he basically he he did have a shorter career, uh, but he was a faceoff guy. Like he won faceoffs. That was his role. That was what he did. I, like he, he was he he basically in the 2006, I think, uh, Edmonton Oilers playoff run, and I could have the wrong guy, but uh, I don't know why that guy came to mind. So I'm going to run with him. But <laughs> that would be the guy that uh, that that I would put in the dot because he he was lights out. Yeah, I have seen him play. Did you know that? I think he came out of junior C for him in Hamilton. He played junior C and made it to the NHL. Could have. I mean, he was a he was a no name. Like he yeah. ended up in uh, he ended up in L.A. Uh, for a bit, uh, and, and and he was like he was a faceoff guy. That's that's yeah. how he made his living. Like he uh, don't get me wrong. The guy, everybody that plays in the NHL is is talented. Yeah, I'm not I'm not downplaying it, but I mean you have to have a niche in what you do. Hockey yeah. Alley teaches kids to shoot a puck like nobody else can shoot a puck. That's yeah. your niche. So it, you can be the greatest stick handler, the greatest. Well, there's a lot of greatest. But when you can do something different, yes. like he did, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes you special. And that's what he did. And he made a living and, you yeah. know, short career. But the guy probably pocketed 10 million bucks. Probably. Hey, if I had 10 sure. million bucks today, you know what? I'd be happy. Yeah. You know who I'd put against you? My friend, Ray Ferraro. Oh, that's a good one. Ray Ferraro, I think, oh, would beat Ray Steve was, Sales. Ray was good in the dot. Yeah. Ray was good in the dot. I think yeah, he's the best. I think he led he was, the NHL. I wouldn't say every year, but yeah, he, he was. A, but you know what, what? What made Ray unique was Ray was a competitor. And that's oh, yeah. a lot of what's lacking in kids today, where they take a face-off and the face-off doesn't matter. Maybe that's coaching, Jack. Yeah. Maybe that's coaching. Maybe. Where they're not stressing the importance of wins and losses. No. So they talk about it, but a guy, a guy in the dot. Now I'll tell you a story. I mean, this happened last night. Yes. Uh, my kid, who's usually, you know, uh, I would say he runs about fifty-five to sixty percent, maybe a little better, usually right. a little better in the dot. He shit the bed in the oh. dot, and his coach moved to the wing, moved to the wing halfway through the game, moved oh. to the wing. I was pretty choked over it, not based on coaching, based on the fact that he wasn't competing in the circle. Right. He wasn't competing at the dot, which is a, which is, I guess Jack, we could we this, this segment could probably be all about faceoffs and strategies <laughs> and, and that kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's it's one of we those both things played where center. I, I don't. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I played both center, wing, and actually yeah. signed my first pro contract mm -hmm. in Europe as a defenseman. But that's beside the point. Uh, you know, it's Europe. Right, but it's it's one of those things where you know I, he wasn't competing in the dot, and that coach recognized that and, and put him on the wing. Yeah, and and I, I don't think I don't think kids appreciate that. You know, where a, a guy like Ray, who is a a fierce, you, you look at the way he announces, and you can you can almost oh, yeah. see like like he's when he's watching that game and announcing that game, yeah. he, like he's in that game, like he's oh, living yeah. that game. So he's when in he the says, zone. <laughs> yeah, he's in the zone, right? Yeah. Like, I, 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 like the kids these days, they don't know how to get in the zone. They don't I guess that's it. another that's another segment, Jacko. <laughs> Just getting in the zone and, and, and yeah. how you focus and compete. And, yeah, yeah, that's a, another one. But I mean, talking about face-off guys, get oh, in the yeah. zone. Get in the zone. Don't lose a face-off. That, that is a that's like getting scored on. That a, oh. a loss in face-off. Yeah. Should be should like that's a goal against you. That's a giveaway. Absolutely. That's a 
you, you know, you've just let four other guys on the ice down because you shit the bed in the face. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. You, you, <laughs> you didn't win the face off. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, if, if, if possession of puck is everything in the game, and if you don't have good good possession of the puck, you, know? you, you win the face off. You gain ten seconds. Yeah, or a shot on net, or absolutely, you know, a scoring opportunity. Absolutely. So it, it, it's a it's an art. It's an absolute art. Yeah. And and you know, I know you mentioned bending the rules. Yeah, we're going to talk that, about kinda, bending the rules today a little bit. But I got another what? question before we do that. Yeah. Can you name me, in your opinion, what's the greatest team ever assembled? And it could be anything. It could be any <laughs> league you want. And I got one. Well, to me, to me, it goes to the early to mid '90s uh, Detroit Red Wings. Okay. Under Scotty Bowman, uh, that that team was that team was invincible. They were they. You know, heavily loaded, uh, you know, Datsuk, Zetterberg, Lindstrom, right. Iserman, uh, McCarthy. Like, they were tough. They were skilled. They were, I, I honestly don't think in today's day and age or previous, like, they could fight. They yeah. scrapped. They, I mean, they they, I, they did absolutely. And, it, you know, at the later end, they had Hasek in, in that, uh, Jimmy mm-hmm. Howard. Uh, not that I was uh, thought Jimmy Howard was a good goaltender, but, I mean, he won Stanley Cup, so I can't. You know, deny him that. But I mean, Osgood. one of those things where Osgood, oh, Osgood. yeah, Vernon, Curtis Osgood, yeah. Vernon, v- Vernon, Mike Vernon played there. Yes, that's right, Mike Vernon. Yeah, well, well, that discredits them because he was a Calgary Flame and I'm not a fan. That'll discredit them. But <laughs> I got a team. But yeah, they were, they, they were. I, in all honesty, Jacko, I think that was the, one of the greatest teams ever, ever, ever assembled in, in the history of hockey and how they played. Awesome. They took cuts in contract to win Stanley Cups. I yeah. wish more players had that mentality that, you, you know, you make your money in sponsorship, you make your money in, in, in all that kind of stuff. I mean, you're making, you know, four or five, six million dollars a year. I mean, you've got enough money to live. It's not about being the highest paid player. It's about winning the Stanley Cup, yeah. which I think is lost. It's lost. You're right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what I, do you think? Yeah. I would uh, pick the Canada Cup 87 Canada team. Team Canada 87 with Mario Lemieux, Gretzky. Even Iserman didn't make the team. Savard didn't make the team. Dion didn't make the team. That team was loaded. And well, was- that's, a, that's a different beast. I did you. That's a trick question, Jacko. Because <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, that was the best team ever in ever, the history. Ever. Ever in the history of the NHL assembly. In the history of hockey. I mean, that, if you look oh, at like, the history 1987. Of hockey, you, you know what, Jack? Yeah. I, can't, I can't argue that if I put my Detroit Red Wings up against your 87 Canada Cup, it's a 20 to 1 game. It's a 20 to 1 game. <laughs> So I, I definitely that was a trick. That was a loaded question. You, I did not have enough information on picking that, but you were absolutely right. That team was star studded. You weren't going to touch them. And honestly, I believe that's why they're not allowing Olympians in the NHL or in the Olympics anymore. That team was very fast. I mean, if you put them up in today's NHL in '87, that those games against the Russians, even the Russians had a. Hell of a team. I mean, that team was loaded too with uh, talent. So that was like that game in today's hockey would be super fast. And they had the red line back then. So there wasn't that free space to move, but they were moving. Everybody was skating oh. hard. Like Lemieux. If you could open that game up, Jack, oh. if they would open that, that an, an 87 yeah. <laughs> Canada Cup game up to no red line, oh. that's, I would feel sorry for the goaltenders. Oh, yeah. That would be that would be like a twenty one twenty game. There were high scoring games, anyways. Every game ended six five six five. Every game there was three games. No, but what I'm saying that, yeah. but Jacko, if yeah. you eliminate that red line where oh, it's yeah. a more football style yeah. with that speed and talent, and oh, yeah. so now you take into today's day and age of training and shooting and and equipment and, and all that kind of stuff, like we've talked about in previous segments. Yes. Oh my gosh, those those guys, <laughs> those guys would be legendary. But you know, the, a big factor in all of that. Is those guys love to be on the ice? Oh, yeah. Their parents, their parents didn't push them or take them to go to the rink. No, those guys just wanted to be at the rink. Gretzky wanted to be there. He didn't care. 
You wanted to be there. You oh, wanted yeah. to shoot. You want like look at us. We used to spend six hours a day at Parkland. Oh yeah. Go swing a <laughs> swing a round of, of golf and, and and then you know kind of golf. We're not real good golfers, no. but I mean, army we, golf. We swing it and we hit it. And, yeah, army golf and you know like we used to call it. And then we we'd, yeah. we'd hit, we then we'd go back and play another hour and a half, two hours. Like it was but fun. Our parents weren't pushing us. This is what we wanted to do. Yeah, we played hockey a lot. That's the same thing with those guys. Uh, but imagine that team trying out. A lot of all-stars didn't even make that team. That's how deep that team was. Bork, Coffee, you had Fury in the net, Hexton. Not even, not even all-stars. Hall of Famers got yeah, cut. That's right. <laughs> Hall of Famers, best on best. Best of the best. Best yeah. on best Hall of Famers yeah. made it. It was very, very tough to make that roster. <laughs> Would you? What rule can you bend that you were thinking like outside the box where you could stump the referee? You have one? Well, it's, I don't know if, I, if it's a stump the referee, Jack, but I, again, going back to the face-off dot, uh-huh. there's a lot of little cheat moves you can do in the face-off dot, or yes. if you're a winger or, or whatever, to, to kind of cheat yes. uh, and get in there. Um, you know, th- those are things to... I'm not, I don't know if it's necessarily bending the rules, but I mean, you know, with, with the video review, which I hated, you can take that out. I remember, you know... Delaying getting back because a, a D man hit me in the corner or yeah, whatever, and yeah. you know you you lay that 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 just the tomahawk in the back of the legs, right? Right. Like not one like break your leg tomahawk that's going <laughs> to end up on TSN, but you know that 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 hard enough chop that the guy kind of buckles down. You know you're chopping a tree; right. it's the last swing, right? Like right. like kind of one of those things where you know those are those are things when guys take advantage of you. You know I'm I I don't I tell my kid that all the time. I'm like. That guy did this. Why didn't you just chop him? Yeah. Why well, didn't want to take a penalty? And it's like, yeah, but if you don't take a penalty, you know, or, or he'll do it again. Away with it. Obviously, you try and get away with it. So you yeah. try to be as discreet as you can. Yeah. Right. But of you know course. the. You, I don't know if you've ever done this, but in front of the net, you you, you put. You know how the uh, the back of your skate comes up over top of your ankle. Yeah. And you put your you put the blade of your stick in there. Oh yeah. And you just kind of skate by him and and, and kind of. With one hand on your stick, and you you just kind of pop it with your knee and push the leg. I mean, it's it's like a stick slew foot. That's is what right. It is. It's <laughs> dirty. It's dirty as all. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I don't encourage that. But I mean, if a guy's a, being a wiener on the ice and and, and you know hacking, and slashing, and whacking, and dirty yeah. stuff, you know, you got to get back at him. You, yeah. you just don't take it. That That's guy, right. honestly, the dirtier the player, I guarantee you, the less tough he is. That's true. Uh, it's a hack. Here's one. Here, here's one that might stump the ref. So we get a, a bench minor, or you know, a guy gets a uh, what do you call it? A, you know, double minor. Someone's got to serve the penalty, right? He's got to serve two minutes or a ten minute, right? I would throw the second backup goalie in the net in the what do you call it, the penalty box? What do you think of that? Oh, yeah. you know, honestly, if it's uh, if he gets a double minor, mm-hmm. it's got to be someone on the ice. But if he gets, I mean, if it's a bench minor, anybody can serve it. Absolutely. I would throw the goal in there. Why Jack, wouldn't you honestly, want, Jack? Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, because then you're not losing a guy. Yeah. Well, you know, you're you're losing nobody. Yeah. You know, uh, here's so another, he, yeah. honestly, I think that would be a, like if you were like, you know, say you, you know, you're coaching and and you told the the referee he's a, you know, a blind mouse or whatever, and he gave you the. <laughs> <laughs> which which they all are. I mean, it's a not, blind not, zebra. <laughs> yeah, blind zebra. And I'm not I'm not, I'm not chirping referees. They don't no. have an easy job, and, and no. it's a fast game. And I get it; they're going to miss stuff. But you know, sometimes you get in the game, and and you you know a call is made that you don't agree with, and you're heated because it's, it's a tight goal. Yeah. I, and, and then that happens, and you throw the like. I don't think I'm going to have to look into that. I'm actually going to I'm going to I'm going to text one of the head refs out here. Uh, <laughs> and, and see if, if if that's legal. Like, is that is that actually in the rule book that you can't do I've that? Never seen I don't it. think it is. Yeah, I've I, never seen it. I got another one. If I pull the goalie, I'll tell the goalie yeah. to throw his stick outside the crease and just lay it there and go to the bench. So if they try to shoot it on an empty net, the stick will block it. Jack, that's brilliant. And it's not in the rule book. <clears throat> it can't be because yeah. you dropped your stick. Yeah. You can't. Oh, Jack. You, you honestly just gave... I would never have said that. Well, I've done it in the game, actually, in midget hockey, like 12 years ago, uh, when I was coaching the midget A's, and uh, 
The, <laughs> the ref got the rule book out and he couldn't find it in there. He was pissed. I just, well, that's not a rule. I mean, you dropped. Yeah. It's it's no different than a player losing their stick. Yeah, but he intentionally it. left it outside. I said, told him don't leave it in the crease because then you know you don't want to be an automatic goal. So what you do is you leave it outside the crease. So no, it, Jacko, that's there's no there there is nothing. If you lose your stick, yeah. and dropping losing anything is I I mean I, I no I I can't <laughs> see there. Jack, that's brilliant. That is I honestly, got another one. I that got another one. Honestly, Jack, that yeah. is the most brilliant thing ever in the entire world. If you drop your stick, because yeah. you think about it, they're not, for the most part, they're just going to try and rip a puck down the ice. Yeah. The goal stick's sitting there. It bounces off. And it helicopters it to the corner, believe it or not. Well, and, and, and yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess a referee legally could go and pick up. Absolutely uh, can. Yeah, he can. <laughs> so there could be a referee that would would jump back there, but I mean, you'd get a lot of in the NHL. You, oh man, you'd get a lot of booze. I got another but one I mean, that you might. If you're yeah, in Game Seven, ahead. Jack, yeah. think about this. You're I, in Game Seven. Yeah. One goal down. I would do it. Your goaltender drops the stick. Yeah. Jumps to the bench. Do you think a referee is going to go back there and grab that stick? Maybe with a four man refs, they might. I don't even know if they would, Jack. Would you throw another? Would you throw another defenseman? I think defenseman? they'd be so confused. I think they'd be so confused. They would never do it. Would you have the sixth man defenseman also drop a stick? So it'd be like two sticks, and he'll come to the bench and grab another one. I mean, that's another thought. So you'd have two sticks out there. So that's a block in the hole. Like if it. Man, if, if you were switching, you could get both defensemen to drop their sticks and switch. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's ways you can bend the rules hey, Jack, every game. Let's, let's, let's stop talking about this because <laughs> that is sheer brilliance in a game. I mean, I don't care. I don't, I don't coach uh, a team, so I can care less. I mean, Jack, I promise you this. Yes. Within the next two years, you're going to see that happen. Well, and it came here first. <laughs> I got another one. I that's, guarantee, yeah. I guarantee really? you will, Jack. I guarantee, I guarantee that's going to get out. That is the most brilliant thing in the world is drop your stick. Yeah. Put and the D-man that breaks out behind the net, yeah, drops a stick, leaves it. I mean, it, it, it's a game of landmines. Hey, anything you can throw them off. I mean, anything you can bend the rules. I mean, I got a couple of more. Uh, the other one I would do, last minute of the game or five minutes left in the game. And you know, you, everybody has white tape on their stick, right? Yeah. And you put a piece of black tape and cut it out so it looks like a puck 3D. And on one of my shooting videos in the beginning, I actually sw- like shoot the puck towards the camera and then I get close and you can see like there's a tape. At first, it looks like a puck. So I have all my guys, like five guys on the ice with that on, on both sides. I mean, that's going to throw the goalie off. That could, yeah. Because you put like a puck, you'd, like tape a puck, like a tape, black tape, the size of a puck and have it slightly round so it looks like a 3D. From far away, it looks just like a puck on the blade. So yeah. each, I mean, it's just crazy, but you know what? Why not? If you're trying to win a game any way you can and you want to score, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I, would, uh, I would do that one if I was playing right now. I'd come up with that. That's not a bad idea. No, and another one I haven't seen, and uh, this will be probably to be the one that I have never seen, is the winger starts skating. In, say you have a face-off in your zone, and the winger starts jetting up speed from behind the net. And before the puck is dropped, before he hits like past the hash marks, the puck is dropped. He's already got a full head of speed going. I've never seen that in the NHL or any league where they're already starting to move. So yeah, nobody really does that. Yeah. So you say the faceoff's ready to go, and the winger starts and jets behind the net and starts picking up speed as the puck is being dropped. He's already like by say if the puck's dropped on the right side of the faceoff dot. He's heading towards the left side, and he's going up. Well, well, Jacko, I have seen that. I have never seen that. I'm I not, have seen that. Where, where did he start? That was, a, that was an Uncle Ned play. Where did he start, would you say? He, he started on the wall, and he started as soon as I'm saying this guy set, goes behind the net. He's skating behind the net like a defense. And that's exactly it. He went behind the net ripping. Yes. To, and the, the D-man, when the faceoff was won. Yes. Would just hammer the puck around the boards. That's right, or pass it up yeah. like on a diagonal pass up, just like. Nope. He would. He would. He would grab the the strong side defenseman on in the corner, 
would just hammer that puck because he the the, the 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 that was an Uncle Ned play. We I, did he never play. did it with us. Well, oh. I did that play. Okay, so Uncle no, Ned. No, no, that never... was that was that was later, and we would okay. we would rip around. Do you and, think he learned it from me? And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and, and we would we would do that play. We absolutely we did that play. So you've seen it before. Okay. Well, we did it. Oh, I mean, I, you've it. done it. But have you ever? I was, I was a, I was a dots guy. So I, I was, and, and when Uncle Ned told you, you better win this, you know, yeah. choice word face off. Uh, you know, you, you knew there was no option. It was, it was a, it was a win or, or stairs after the game, <laughs> and you always won that dot. You, have you, you ever never, seen any other I, team do it? Never. No. Ever, 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 ever in my life have I ever seen another team do it. And you know what? This would work good on a European ice with a bigger surface, and you could oh, really yeah. pick up speed. Like, I'm talking, you know, so you start, say, the centerman is, on, say, on the right side of the uh, face-off dot in your zone, and you put the right winger, and you put a defenseman so covering the, the other forward on the boards, right? So the right yeah. winger uh, or left winger jets fast around the net. So he goes fast. And he has to time it so he's not over past the line. Otherwise, they'll you know blow it down. So you got to—he's got to well, drop the puck. Jacko, that's no different than in the NFL. That's called a man in motion. It's a, okay. I don't really watch football, so I don't know anything about football. But it's, I know uh, there's a quarterback play. and stuff. But so, I don't. Watch. But it's a, it's a man in motion. Okay. And that's all it is. And, the, oh. and then you time it, and yeah, it's the same. It's the same concept. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of. There's actually a lot of plays in football that transpire to what a hockey team could do mm-hmm. for kind of basically screwing up a screwing up a face off. Yeah. And I'm thinking and jumping and doing and you know, again, I don't believe enough coaches, enough players focus enough on the face off. But uh, I I got another one. What? And, and you know, so so you got a lineup, right? You got you got your lineup. You put your wingers, your defense, or whatever. Why don't you switch the positions around on the lineup? Put the forwards as defensemen, so when they get out there, they're trying to match lines, you know. And they're like, "What the heck's going on? That's not defense. That guy's forward." And like, "Oh man!" And that's just throw them off. I mean, why do you put the real positions on the guys? Well, because I think you know what in the you know when you're playing at high levels when you're playing with kids yeah yeah for sure you could you could mess around with coaches for sure uh, but when you're when you're playing at the high levels like the NHL or America like paid paid leagues let's call yeah, them that paid leagues you know they they know where everybody plays so you could you could put down whatever you want on the charts the only, the only thing that matters is the starting lineup everybody's gonna line up where you put them on the board yeah but if they're trying to That's match only, lines and stuff and they say oh they're looking at the paper well, they're, they're, this- but they know like yeah. at the high like at, at yeah. paid leagues yeah like you know Connor mcdavid is not a defenseman so no. you can put him <laughs> as a defenseman everybody like they're just gonna laugh at you and, and say that but in, in young ages Absolutely, no. you can. Yeah, I'm talking mess kids. Them. Yeah, I mean that's oh, really you could, mess with, you could mess the with because these coaches they they're not they're not real coaches. They don't think. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. No. There, there are some really good coaches out there. Yeah, but realistically, <laughs> they're, they're not coaches. They no. tell you. You know, they're working their way to the American League, or they're they want to coach pro, and they're never making. If you don't have a hockey background, you're never going to coach. What about the greatest coach of all time, uh, Scotty Bowman? He never played. You are a jack Bowman, Bowman had lived in a different era. They're, those coaches don't exist now. They, oh. The hockey world, I don't get, no, sorry, I should not say that. Because I believe there's amazing coaches out there that never, look at, look at Mr. Miyagi. Steve, your dad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. He so played for fun. There are great coaches out there, and I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. But nowadays, the the way professional hockey works is they look after professional athletes. So when you retire, when you this, if you want the game, they they just gift you a spot, and and you know, it, it's just it, it's it's no longer best on best. It's it's best friend on best friend. It's so true. to speak, it's true. Well, There's so many course, jobs out there. Who you know? It's it's who you know? Who you screw? Kind of thing. It, it's it's a uh, it's just a it's a terrible 
you know, we're, we're not, I, I wish there was another league. I wish there was, don't get me wrong, I love the NHL and it, it's all good. But, yeah. you know, I, I wish it was just best on best. Yeah. And if you're, if you're there, you're there. If you're not, you're not. Yeah. It's not that you're, you're an NHL, you know, player's son or whatever. Don't get me wrong, those, those guys are, you know, you look at DeBrusque and all those, those, yeah. those kids that are playing in the NHL. Like, they're great hockey players. Yeah. I can't deny the fact that they're, they are NHL hockey players. Yes. Like they are for sure, but if they were a nobody, what have they made it as far? As, what have they got their chance? Uh, they wouldn't have gotten a fair chance. I mean, getting a chance if if you have your well, they would have gotten a your, chance. No, they would have gotten a chance. Yeah, but you know, because they are amazing hockey players. Yes. But what if they? You know, you look at McTavish, the that was the captain of Team Canada this year in the World Juniors. Mm-hmm. Great hockey player, but would he really have gotten the chance based on his skating and, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. You know, what have you gotten the chance to do that? Like, you know, they, they, is the guy going to make money in the NHL? For sure, he is. Is yes. he going to win a Stanley Cup? Man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it unless he's a fourth line grinder. Yes, that's true. That's a lot of them like that. Connections is everything in this game. I mean, that's of course it is. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah. So that was an interesting uh, topic. We we covered quite a bit of bending the rules and all that. And, uh, yeah, it yeah. was uh, that was a unique topic, Jack. Well, yeah. that's, uh, that's a good one to discuss. And yeah, I'm glad to discuss it because there's there's uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do, can't do, and and you know it's a, a very lengthy topic because it, it's kind of a broad topic. We'll see who's going to do what we kind of suggested or, or came up with. We'll see what happens. Jack, I'll tell you right now, the the the, the most brilliant thing in this entire conversation <laughs> was dropping your stick as a goaltender. Yeah, I mean, that I think is the, it's not that in the, is the book. Greatest, That is the greatest thing in the entire world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.